note that you are overweight equities. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but but I guess the real question is, what about those seven equities that have made up so much of the gains so far this year or over the past year and a half? Where are you on the Magnificent Seven? You still love them? You loathe them? What? Ah, well, we love some of them and we loathe, loathe some others of them. Thanks for the question, Tyler. So as we look at the Magnificent Seven, there's no question that since 22, when they really acted in, in concert, and even most of 23 when they acted in concert, this year we've seen a lot of divergence with NVIDIA up almost 200% this year. Um, and of course, others like Tesla uh, and even Apple struggling a little bit more. So as we look at them, I think you need to keep a couple things in mind. Number one, where are you starting off with valuations and how fast are the earnings going to grow and how much cushion is there in the valuation if the earnings are a little shy? So I know we, you, you talked a little bit about Amazon earlier uh, and, and how they might slow down a little bit. Uh, and, and even if they do, it'll go from, what, 25% growth to 20 So that's not so bad. Similarly with Microsoft, the one thing I would say there is that they're getting people to pay for Copilot GitHub right now. Now, are they going to uh, have to push out a little bit on some of the adoption of their regular Copilot? Maybe, but you're still getting solid double-digit earnings growth for a pretty reasonable multiple. So I think you need to be careful. And then when it comes to Apple that you that you brought up, we've mm. been underweight Apple for quite some time for a lot of the reasons that you cite, not just because AI might be take longer to be adopted, uh, but just because the growth isn't there, right? The growth of Apple is half or less in terms of earnings than these other companies are, and yet you're paying nearly the same multiple. So we're overweight some and underweight others. Mm -hmm. We like Microsoft here. We don't like Apple. Okay. What do you think of NVIDIA, given the fact that we did get these Foxconn CEO comments that basically said this AI boom, quote, still has some time to go, and that the demand for NVIDIA's new chips, the Blackwell chips, is much better than than we thought, according according to that uh, chief executive. I mean, it comes on the heels of NVIDIA's CEO, Jensen Huang, just last week on CNBC's Overtime, talking about the demand being, quote, unquote, insane. At some point, that's going to slow down. And when it does, it's going to be pretty ugly. But for right now, I think the demand is insane. They're seeing very strong demand. If you look at the earnings estimates for the last several years, they just keep going up. And that's another one where you're actually paying a reasonable multiple for the earnings growth that is going to happen. And they are in the pole position, as we all know, strategically. So at some point that will slow down and there will be more competition and we will need to be more careful about what we're paying for it. But for right now, we're absolutely long NVIDIA. Yeah, we also got some bullish comments from Supermicro yesterday, too. Steve, I mean, we keep talking about this AI trade. Is it long in the tooth? Is it still about picks and shovels? Are we, should we be focusing more on the application la layer? Um, when do we start to see that realization as well? That's, that's the huge question, right? And that for Apple, it's selling phones. For Microsoft, I'll just bounce on what Ellen said about Copilot. She mentioned Copilot GitHub. That is a version of their AI assistant for uh, computer engineers and computer coders. Immensely popular. She's totally right about that. The, enterprise version of Copilot, the stuff that they're trying to sell to people at businesses and at work to go along with your word and your outlook and your teams, that doesn't appear to be doing as well. And that's where the bigger opportunity is. There are over 400 million people every day, day using uh, Microsoft's uh, 365 suite of uh, uh, applications. Tack on another $30 per user per month times 400 million. You can see what the opportunity is there for them. And we just have no idea how well it's selling. We have a, some mushy, opaque stats from them, but it's unclear and it doesn't feel like or seem like it's selling in a significant way, at least not the way they, they've been presenting it and, and saying this is going to change the way we work and so forth. That hasn't materialized yet. So when you talk about the software level, that is where it plays with Microsoft. When you talk about the hardware level, the AI features have to be good enough on these Apple devices to drive more sales. And it doesn't seem like that's happening yet. We're going to have to wait until it actually launches to see if that kind of ignites some more demand.